Kroger stock, ticker symbol KR. Is this a defensive dividend stock to buy now? Kroger stock is up 6% year to date, which is quite interesting since the S&P 500 is down almost 20%. And this is one of the reasons why Kroger is loved among the investor. They are a steady stock and on top of that they pay a 2.70% dividend yield. So is this the perfect time to buy Kroger stock? In this video I'm going to show real quickly what Kroger does, a view at the historical returns, the fundamental analysis, dividends, their major competitors and in the last part I'm giving you my price target to see if they are a buy or not. I'm very excited to see what you guys think about this stock so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. Please subscribe to join the community and to receive multiple analysis every week where I will tell you everything you need to know about the stock market. So what does Kroger do? Kroger is a leading American grocer with more than 2700 supermarkets operating under several banners throughout the country as of end of fiscal 2021. Around 83% of these stores have pharmacies while nearly 60% also sell fuel. The company also operates roughly 120 fine jewelry stores. Kroger features a leading private label offering and manufactures around 30% of its own brand units. If we check the most recent quarterly report we see that ideal sales is up 4.1% but digital sales is down 6.3%. So this is something that's really interesting. But keep in mind that this might be influenced by the lockdown periods as well. Another interesting thing is that they increased the guidance for the IDs, EPS and operating profit. So they expect to do a better job in the rest of the year. In this graph we see the revenue breakdown by category. Their biggest category is non-perishable, representing around 50% of their total sales. Second largest category is perishable, representing 25% of the total sales. Third largest category is fuel, around 10% of the total sales. Pharmacy, convenience store and other represent the last 15%. So now that we know more about the company Kroger, it's time to check the historical stock price performance to see what happened there and also to compare it to the S&P 500 as a benchmark and some major competitors. I decided to include Walmart, Albertson and Costco. On the 5 year chart we see that Kroger had a total return of 132% including dividends, versus the S&P 500 at 72%. So you easily beat them the S&P 500 in the past 5 years with owning Kroger. Walmart had a total return of 86%. Albertson is at 78% and Costco is at 253%. So all stocks did beat the S&P 500 quite easily. On the 1 year chart it's pretty much the same. Kroger is at 27% while the S&P 500 is at minus 10%. Walmart is also at a minus 10%. Albertson and Costco had a decent return and beaten the S&P 500 on the one year chart. On the 6 month chart we see that Kroger is the only stock that doesn't have a negative return. The S&P 500 is down 17.5% which is quite a lot. Walmart is down 12% and Albertson and Costco are down 4 to 7%. On the one month chart we see that Kroger is down 4%. The S&P 500 is down only 1%. Walmart is up almost 5%, Albertson is down 7% and Costco is up the most with 10.5%. So does this mean that at current prices Kroger is a buy? Let's find out by checking the fundamentals of this company. Kroger is a 35 billion market cap company with a 12 trading month revenue of 137 billion. Which is quite a lot compared to the market cap. In this graph we see that the revenue is going up quite nice and steady and to be honest it's growing at a decent amount for a company this big in the past couple of quarters. Net income sits at 1.66 billion which gives us a profit margin of 1.2% which is really low of course. But this is typical for companies like Kroger. But to be honest 1.2% does feel like a really low number. Especially since the 5 year average is at 1.5%. Meaning profit margin is decreasing in the past couple of years. So keep an eye on that number. PE ratio is at 21, which could indicate that this company is near its fair valuation. But please keep in mind that for a company this big and growing at mid single digits, you want Mike to pay a lower PE ratio. So please watch until the end to see my three price targets for Kroger. Next up is return on assets, sitting at 4.6%, which is below my 10% minimum. 
So this is something I don't like. Return on equity is at 70.7%, which is really nice. The return on invested capital is at almost 11%, also very nice. Especially since it's above the 5 year average of 6.8%. So they do a good job there. The next thing I want to discuss is the balance sheet and cash flow statement. Kroger has a total cash of 1.38 billion and an operating cash flow is at 5 billion. Leverage free cash flow is at 4.4 billion. You want them to be able to pay a big chunk of their total debt. At least 50% in this case. Right now total debt is at 20 billion. So to be honest this doesn't look good. They have too much debt compared to the free cash flow. So for me it's very important that free cash flow is growing. Since this is used to pay down debt of course but also to buy back shares, do acquisitions, pay dividends and a lot of things. In this graph we see that free cash flow is growing but it's not really consistent. So the good part is that it's growing, but I do like to see a bit more consistent pattern and pace here. And as I said a second ago, free cash flow is also used to buy back shares. In this graph we see that Kroger is buying back a lot of shares. In the past 5 years they bought back roughly 21% of the shares outstanding, which is insane. So this looks really good to me and adds a lot of value to the investor. Since EPS goes up and less dividends are paid. And since we're talking about dividends anyway, let's check the dividend scorecard to see why people love Kroger. Kroger has a 2.17% dividend yield and an annual payout of $1.04 a share, or 26 cents each quarter. Payout ratio is at only 21% and the 5 year growth rate is at 11%. They grew the dividends for 16 years in a row. To be honest, from a dividend perspective this looks really good. The last dividend increase was around 26% in the most recent quarter, so that's also really nice. Next up are the fundamentals of Kroger versus their major competitors. I decided to include Albertson, Walmart and Costco. We see that both Walmart and Costco are by far the biggest companies in terms of market cap. All companies are trading below a 20 PE ratio except for Costco, so that's quite interesting. Albertson has the lowest PE ratio. Costco has the highest revenue growth year over year, and also the highest 3 and 5 year revenue compound annual growth rate. Kroger is sitting at the second spot. Net income compound annual growth rate is the lowest at Kroger, so that's looking disappointing. Kroger also has the lowest net income margin, but we do see that all companies have a lower margin as told earlier in this video. Return on equity is the highest at Elbertson and Costco. Return on assets is the lowest for Kroger, so that doesn't look good. Costco has the highest return on assets. Return on total capital is also the lowest at Kroger, so again, it doesn't look good. When we check the balance sheet, we see that all companies have a lot of debt compared to the free cash flow, except for Costco. So Costco is definitely the winner here. The last thing I want to do is compare the dividends. Kroger has the highest dividend yield and almost the lowest payout ratio. The different growth rate is also one of the highest at Kroger, so they are definitely the winner in this part. Walmart increased the dividends for 48 years in a row, which is very impressive. Kroger is at 16 years, which is also pretty impressive. The last part of this video is about the three price targets that I created using the Everything Money software. Please check them out, the software is one of the best out there and that's my honest opinion. I don't get paid or anything for promoting this software. I have a low, mid and high assumption where I fill in the numbers for revenue growth, profit margin, free cash flow margin, PE ratio, price to free cash flow and my desired annual return. I'm conservative with my low price target based on the 1, 5 and 10 year average. My high assumption is based of course on higher expectations. Right now Kroger is at $48 a share and based on my assumption it has to come down quite a lot to be a value play. I have a low price target of $21, a mid price target of $32 to $34 and I have a high price target of $44 to $50. To be honest, I think the mid assumption is the most realistic one here. So my final conclusion on this stock is that I really love the business. And I also do love certain parts of the stock. It's a steady and consistent business with a decent revenue growth. But margins don't look that good, even for this industry. They also do have a lot of debt compared to the free cash flow, so that's also worrying me a lot. The things I do like is the increasing ROIC, 
the dividends and the share buyback program. For now, I think I will wait to see what is going to happen. I did own Kroger stock for a while ago, and I sold it because it turned to an overvalued company. When it's coming down again, I do think I will consider buying again, since it's a nice and steady business. For now, I will wait for the stock price to hit my price target of $32 to $34 a share, and evaluate them from time to time, to see if the fundamentals are changed. But remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about a stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I would really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.